you go, Mr. Squirrel. Keep the cast on for six weeks and don't get it wet. Aww. He's totally gonna get it wet. Hey there, Snow White. Let's pause for a second. That was Shep Huntsman. A lot of people just called him the Huntsman because he was actually the official hunter for the king. Okay, let's continue with the story. Hi, Shep. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> oh, you know, just hanging out. Cool. <laughs> He's really nice, and he taught me all kinds of wilderness survival skills. Today we're reading Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Giggle, snap, story time. Mike was the coolest girl around. She was funny. And then I said, that's not a yo-yo, it's a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and best of all, she was kind to every oh. creature on earth. She was even kind to her stepmother, Katrine Francesca Karina Amelia Anastasia von Kluster Stottenstein. You can call her the Evil Queen for short. As you might guess, the Evil Queen was not nice at all. It's like she only cares about herself. Yes, that was the problem. The Queen did not care for anyone other than herself, and she cared for herself way too much. She even traveled all the way to Grim Forest, wow. where the witches lived, just to buy a magic mirror that would tell her how great she was. Story time, story time. Miss Booksy's gonna meet you inside her magic books. Cinderella's dress in blue, Goldilocks and spinning clock. Wiggle snap, wiggle snap, everybody wiggle snap, wiggle snap, wiggle snap, everybody wiggle This one is real nice. It'll tell you how wonderful you are. Error, error. Oh! Never mind, that one's no good. Okay, now this magic mirror is top of the line. You're gonna love it. Honestly, I'm getting some mean vibes from you. <laughs> Next. Uh, okay, uh, this one. This is a great magic mirror. Go ahead, ask it. Excuse me, Mr. Mirror. No, 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 no. You gotta say, mirror, mirror on the wall. It likes that. All right. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the most amazing person of all? You are my queen. You are the most amazing person of all. You're the best. Aha, I'll take it. Oh man, Snow White's stepmother loved that mirror. She would ask it like a dozen times a day if she was still the most amazing person in all the land. Will you pass the gravy, please? Hold on, hold on. Mirror, mirror on the wall. It's your turn. Yes, yes, one moment. Mirror, mirror on the wall. This again? <laughs> mirror, mirror on the wall. Who I'm is trying the to sleep. <laughs> so yeah, the mirror was pretty annoying. The queen loved giving Snow White chores, as evil queens tend to do. So one day she was cleaning the evil queen's bedroom. She was just about finished when she noticed some schmutz on the magic mirror. Snow White reached out to dust the mirror and... <gasps> it's you! What? You are the most amazing person in the land! Why, thank you, but don't say that. The queen will get, like, really mad. Ugh, she is so mean but I can see that you have a good heart. Aww. Thanks for the compliment, but you really must keep telling her that she's the best. Promise? Okay. Long story short, the mirror did not keep his promise for long. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the most amazing person of all? You, my lady, are an amazing person. Of all? Yeah, sure, of all. Say it then, say the whole thing. Uh... What was that? Nothing, nothing, nothing. It sounded like something. It's just that Snow White may be more amazing. But the queen didn't scream or break things, and she didn't cry. She was just very quiet. That's not good, kids. When the evil queen gets quiet, it means she's really, 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 really mad. For revenge, she gave Snow White an endless list of chores to do. I had to clip her toenails. Ugh. I had to brush her cat's teeth. And as always, I had to clean her room, which she had left super messy on purpose. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Tomorrow I'm sending you to the Grim Forest to return this defective mirror. I'm sure you'll both have a lovely time. Wake up! 
What time is it? It's time to go to the Grim Forest. <laughs> he is the mirror. What happened to it? It's all smashed. See, I told you it was defective. See ya. She'll find her way into the forest, but she'll never find her way out. <laughs> okay. This is only extremely very scary. No big deal. I wish the queen hadn't busted the mirror. He would be good company about now. Ugh, and these directions. Walk backwards down the dragon's path? Make a left at the gargoyles. A backwards left or a frontwards left? Then hop on one foot. Why? So the wishes shop should be? Yoo-hoo, right here. You looking for me? Yeah. How'd you know? Oh, just witch's intuition. That means I'm a really good guesser. Come inside. So my stepmom wants to return this mirror. Oh, this mirror is very smart. Top of the line. Or at least it was. Yeah, I think the queen had a temper tantrum. <laughs> I remember her. Ugh, she's a doozy. Tell me about it. <laughs> This mirror was perfect for her. He knows when to tell a little white lie. Oh, like telling her she's the most amazing in the land? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a fib if I ever heard them. Hey, think we could just fix the mirror? I was starting to like him and I have a feeling I'm gonna need his all-knowing powers. <laughs> all-knowing is good. We'll just put a new face on him, new frame, and boom, looks brand new. Awesome! Snow White said goodbye to the witch and began her journey out of the Grim Forest. Why, hello there. Hi. <laughs> Maybe the Grim Forest isn't so bad. Once upon a time, a girl named Snow White was on a journey through the woods and needed to find her way home. Luckily, she had a magic mirror with her. It's getting dark and I'm lost. Wait. I know, the mirror will know how to get out. Um, hello, Mr. Mirror? Where's the on switch? <laughs> Snow White tried everything she could think of to get the mirror to work. She tried voice command. Mirror, activate. She tried shaking it. Finally, she tried yelling at no one in particular. Why? Um, excuse me, ma'am. Ah! Sorry, didn't mean to frighten you. Are you okay? I'm lost, and it's dark, and this mirror is supposed to know everything, and it won't turn on. And I'm hungry, and I'm scared, and Aww. who are you? I'm the professor. You must be smart. Do you know the way out of this forest? I need to get back to my kingdom. Yep, follow me. Okay. The professor led Snow White out of the Grim Forest, all the way to where Snow White had began. Thank you so much, professor. <laughs> You're welcome. I hope to see you again one day. They said their goodbyes, and Snow White went inside the palace to give her stepmother the mirror. You're back? I mean, um, you're, you're back. How lovely. And I brought you a new mirror. <laughs> I don't know how to turn it on, though. It needs batteries. Duh. Oh. <laughs> well, good night. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the most amazing person of all? Better say me. It's you, my queen. <laughs> there you go, Mr. Squirrel. Keep the cast on for six weeks and don't get it wet. Aww. He's totally gonna get it wet. Hey there, Snow White. Let's pause for a second. That was Shep Huntsman. A lot of people just called him the Huntsman because he was actually the official hunter for the king. Okay, let's continue with the story. Hi, Shep. How's it going? Oh, you know, just hanging out. Cool. He's really nice, and he taught me all kinds of wilderness survival skills. He taught me how to call a turkey. Hello, can I please speak to Mr. Turkey? No, like this. <laughs> how to make s'mores. Are they done yet? Are they done yet? Are they done yet? He even taught me what to do if I encountered an angry fire-breathing dragon. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? It's you, it's you all. Oh. Anyway, what I mean is, he's just cool. <laughs> you huntsman boy, I need to speak to you. Now! You better go. She's been super testy lately. Okay, see you later. See ya. 
huntsman boy. I need you to do a job for me. Sure, your highness. I need you to take Snow White out. On a date? A date? No, I need you to take Snow White deep into the forest and sell her to the wizard. I don't get it. There's nothing to get. You take her into the woods. You sell her to the weird wizard who will turn her into a frog or something. I don't think I can do this. It's not nice. Ugh. If you don't do it, I will. And trust me, that's much worse. The pretty little Snow White. Now run along. You have work to do. This is bad. I mean, you look red. The huntsman was very upset. He went down oh. to sit by the koi pond. That's where he liked to do his serious thinking. I really like Snow White. I couldn't do anything to hurt her. What am I supposed to do? Meanwhile, Snow White went upstairs to do her chores and talk to her friend, the mirror. Hey, how are ya? The queen is making the huntsman take you out. On a date? No, out in the forest where he's gonna sell you to the wizard. Chef Huntsman would never do that to me. The queen said if he doesn't, she'll do worse. I'm gonna miss being a princess, but I will be brave and I will go out into the forest, and I will survive. Aww. One day, I will return. Not as a princess, but as a queen. Snap girl, that was fierce. <laughs> Snow White and the Huntsman set off for their journey into the grim forest. It was a little awkward for a few reasons. So, uh, the sky is blue. Uh, uh I mean, a uh, nice day, right? Yeah. <laughs> Perfect day for a stroll. Yeah. Just a nice stroll through a spooky forest. <laughs> Look, I know the queen told you to get rid of me. You do? I won't sell you to the wizard, I promise. Psh, like I was gonna let you. Wow. I can't just leave you out here. I'll be okay. You taught me all kinds of survival skills. I better go. Don't want to make the queen mad. See ya, Snow White. See ya, Shep Huntsman. And that's how Snow White began her first day as a non-princess. Well. I better start setting up camp. Perfect. It's shabby chic. <laughs> oh man. Okay, third time's a charm. Excuse me, Snow White? Professor, boy am I glad to see you. What are you doing here? I live here now. <laughs> We're neighbors. Great, there goes the neighborhood. <laughs> Who's your friend? That's Sassy McSassy Pants. That's your name? I love it. <laughs> My real name is Sasper. It's short for exasperation. No, it isn't. Snow White, you can't live out here like this. Oh, sure I can. I'm not a princess anymore. I'm just a regular girl. Regular girls don't live under a pile of sticks in Grim Forest. Come on, you're moving in with us. No. Aww. Hush, Sasper. Oh, I shouldn't intrude. No, she shouldn't. Nonsense. Let's go. Snow White grabbed her bag and followed the professor and Sasper to their little cottage in the woods. She was so excited. I've never had roommates before. <laughs> this is going to be so much fun. Good, Good morning. morning. How long have you guys been there? We're just so excited. We've never had a princess for a roommate, or any roommate at all, except for all of us, of course. And we used to have a dog. Does that count? I think so. Do you want breakfast? Snacky made pancakes. They're shaped like animals. They're the best. You're so perky for so early in the morning. <laughs> What's your name? Kitty. Cute. You fell asleep as soon as you walked in the door yesterday. OK, let's do names. Of course, I know you, Professor. <laughs> and now you know me and Sassy. I'm Snacky. He's the one who makes the pancakes. I'm sloppy. <laughs> I see. <laughs> I'm clumsy. That's just my nickname, though. I'm actually quite graceful. I'm OK. Is that everyone? Don't forget me. I'm Tiny. Oh. Hi. <laughs> Well, I'm pleased to meet all of you. <laughs> Finally, it was settled that Snow White would spruce up the cottage in exchange for free room and board. She did other little things too, like cut their hair and make a new chef's hat for Snacky. Oh, and she changed all the light bulbs, which was a huge help. <laughs> Snow White kept so busy that she didn't even have time to miss home. Actually, speaking of home, the evil queen was having a ball without Snow White around. She brought the mirror with her everywhere and showed everyone how it would say that she was the most awesome person in all the land. Ask the mirror if you're the most awesome person. 
Okay, okay, I'll ask. Mirror, mirror, in my hand, who's the most awesome person in the land? It's you, queen. You are so awesome. Pretty rude, though, if you ask me. Hear that? I'm the most awesome person in the land. Three cheers for me. Oh, yay. Let's have a party in my honor. And I'll save my first dance for you, Mr. Huntsman. I, uh, actually can't. I'm busy. Busy? Too busy to attend a party of the queen? What are you doing that's so important? She watched the huntsman from her window as he walked out of the palace and straight toward... Grim Forest? Wow. Suspicious. I'll have to follow him and find out what he's up to. The queen followed the huntsman into the woods. Who's there? What was that? Finally, they stopped. Hey there. Snow White! The queen rushed over to the witch's shop and barged right in. Hey, I don't hear knocking. This is an emergency! I need something! Something... Evil. Yeah, all right. What? No, no, I'm turning to stone. Why? Help, help, help. Wow. Oh no, Snow White had become a statue from head to toe. The dwarves were just coming back from work. What's that? Looks like a statue. It looks like Snow White. Cool, I want a statue that looks like me. Wait, I think this is Snow White. It must be an evil curse from that evil queen. She's so evil. The dwarves were so upset. Maybe she could kiss a frog. Here! Why do you have a frog in your pocket? Why not? It's cute! Okay, let's reverse this spell. Maybe say some magic words! Alakazam! Abracadabra! Kalamazoo! What's you? It's no use! We don't know magic! We could go to a witch. Yes! We have to save our friend! The professor and Giddy set off to find a witch to reverse the spell. The two finally found what they were looking for. Ye old magic shop! Hello! Hi! Ding, 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 ding! Ah! Uh, I mean, hello! I'm Giddy! Good for you! And I'm the professor! We need to reverse an evil spell! What kind of spell? Our friend was turned to stone! That worked? Wow! Uh, alright, I mean, uh, let's see what I have in the antidote department. That means stuff that undoes bad stuff. While Giddy, Professor, and the witch mixed up the antidote, the evil queen was back at her castle, thinking, How do I know some dingbat isn't gonna stumble along and reverse this spell? I'm sure it's fine. Nope. I'm going back to take the statue. The evil queen strikes again. Wake up, guys! It's time to save Snow White! We have the antsy goat! Wait! Where's Snow White? I bet the evil queen took her. We have to go find her! There's the castle. Now what? We storm the gates and find Snow White! Wait! There's Snow White now! I have the witch's antidote. We'll just go up and turn her back to her old self. Hey, Professor, over here. Hey! It's the Huntsman! Why are you in jail? The Queen locked me up for trying to help Snow White. Suddenly, there was the evil Queen standing right between the dwarves and Snow White. Save Snow White? Never! We will save her! It's time to fight back! The dwarves grabbed the Queen's legs and stopped her in her tracks. Get off me! Get off! The queen tried to move forward, but it was no use. But then she spotted the witch's spell-reversing potion in the professor's hand. Give me that! No way! Got it! <laughs> now get off me! Then the professor had an idea. You want us to let go of you? Yes! Let go! Okay! Let go, guys! Evil Queen dropped the antidote and it fell right smack dab on Snow White's head. Shoot, birds, shoot! Why am I back at the castle? And Shep, why are you in jail? The Evil Queen put me here. No, where is she? Over there! Owie! Let's bust Shep out of jail and put that bad apple in his place. Yeah! No! Sorry, majority rules, Evil Queen drools. <laughs> Once the Evil Queen was locked away in jail, Shep, the dwarves, and Snow White all kicked back and relaxed, happy as could be. Now how's that for a happy ending? <laughs> and that's the end. 
Hopefully Snacky can cook up an amazing cake to celebrate. Thanks for coming to Storytime. Can't wait to read more stories with you at Storytime soon. Bye. Ow. What's the matter? You don't like dodgeball? I like dodgeball just fine, but we weren't playing dodgeball. You simply threw the ball at my head. See, that I don't like. Whatever, Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. That's not my name. Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. Oh, not cool. Ah! ah monster, run! Ah. Thank you for chasing away those bullies. But I have to ask, are you a nice monster or a mean monster? Hi there, kids! Welcome to Storytime at Cool School with me, Miss Booksy. Today we're reading Frankenstein Makes a Monster. Wiggle, snap, story time! Hi, I'm Mary Shelley Frankenstein, sister to the world's biggest mischief-making little brother, Victor Frankenstein. That's Dr. Frankenstein! He's not a doctor, obviously. He's ten. <laughs> ten and a half. Anyway, one day he was bored. And when Victor Frankenstein gets bored, bad things happen. Story time, story time. Miss Booksy's gonna meet you inside. Her magic books, Cinderella's dress in blue. Goldilocks and spinning clock. Wiggle snap, wiggle snap, everybody. Wiggle snap, wiggle snap, wiggle snap, everybody. Wiggle Example, one time he filled all my shoes with slime! Ew! Victor! And then one time he put baking soda and vinegar in his teacher's coffee. And yeah, it exploded. Victor! And this one time, oh, this is really bad, he put glue on the toilet seat and my dad got stuck! Ah! Victor! So like I was saying, bored Victor equals bad Victor. And that's how the story begins. I'm bored! I want to make something. Something big, something bad, something epic. I know! Today I'm going to create a monster! Uh-oh! Victor went down to his laboratory, aka our basement, and got to work. That's where he did all his experiments. Some fishing hooks, I can use those. Slinky, check. Some nuts and bolts and screws and stuff, sure. Modeling clay, finger paints, glue. Grandpa's toupee, perfect. A garbage can, some brooms, a mop, googly eyes. A couple of my sister's patriotic girl dolls. My old teddy bear, Mr. Teddy Puff Puff. Wait, no, I didn't mean it, Mr. Teddy Puff Puff. Promise, forgive me? I love you too, Teddy. Aw, that's sweet. But don't be fooled. Victor was up to a seriously naughty scheme. Now back to my seriously naughty scheme. It's time to create my monster. A monster that will wreak havoc and destroy the whole world. <laughs> oh no, don't be scared, Mr. Teddy Puff Puff. My monster won't destroy you. Now, time to work. Victor worked all day into the night, not even stopping for snack time. He snipped, ripped, chopped, blew, Fastened, refastened, attached thingamabobs and whatchamacallits until finally he was satisfied. My monster! Now to bring him to life! It's alive! Okay, I thought that would work. It's alive? How do I turn this thing on? It's. it's. It's alive! <laughs> yes! And now we will unleash chaos onto the world! <laughs> oh, are you hungry? Let's see, what do monsters eat? There's some leftover meatloaf in here. It's really gnarly, so you might like that. Nom 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 nom. Okay, you get enough to eat yet? We have to go wreak havoc and chaos and stuff! Whoa, awesome! Hey, wait for me! Victor, you stop right there, young man. Who made this mess? 
by monster did it? Right, sure, a monster did it. Well, guess who's going to clean it up? Me? That's right. But, oh, no buts. But there was a but, a big one. A real live monster was on the loose. But really, he was probably more afraid than anyone. The world was brand new to him, and he couldn't help but be frightened. Oh, sad. <gasps> Finally, he found a nice resting spot and fell asleep. Okay, so maybe it wasn't such a good resting spot because during recess, the jungle gym is a pretty happening spot. And it wasn't very long until... Ah! And that woke the monster. Arr! The monster felt a little bit safer in the woods. He sat there and watched the playground waiting for the kids to leave. A bell rang and the kids left. But then an older group of kids came out, including me. Ow! What's the matter? You don't like dodgeball? I like dodgeball just fine, but we weren't playing dodgeball. You simply threw the ball at my head. See, that I don't like. Whatever, Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. That's not my name. Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. Oh, not cool. Ah! Ah! Monster, run! Ah. Thank you for chasing away those bullies. But I have to ask, are you a nice monster or a mean monster? Ah. Okay, I'm gonna take a wild, possibly dangerous guess and say that you seem like a nice monster. I'm Mary. Repeat after me. Monster. 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 Mon. Okay, that's pretty close. Now add the stir. Monster. Monster. Great. Okay, I should really teach you some more words, but that took like an hour, so let's move on to something else. How about some social skills? Let's try a handshake. Ah. Now we put our hands together, and then we shake. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Good. Thanks. All right, it's time for me to go home for dinner. Do you think you'll be okay here for tonight? <laughs> yeah, you better come with me. I'll hide you in my old playhouse. But by the time I got home and the monster was all settled in, news had gotten out. Reports of the mystery monster have been coming in all day from people like this gentleman. I nearly ran him over in my car last night. I don't know if my insurance would have covered that. And these innocent children. I was just minding my own business when he tried to hit me with a ball. City officials are urging citizens to stay inside and lock your doors. But some local vigilantes want to take matters into their own hands. Yeah, we're going to get that monster. I ain't afraid of no monster. Uh-oh. Oh, no. According to eyewitness reports, the monster has caused over $11,000 in damage, and an old-fashioned pitchfork and torch-wielding gang of locals has sworn to capture the beast. Yeah! yeah. Back to you, Chuck. Oh, dear! I told you it was the monster that wrecked the kitchen. Go to bed, Victor. Well, I couldn't just leave the monster outside in my old playhouse, not with a bunch of vigilantes out there hunting him. Shh, okay, you can sleep in here, but you have to be quiet. <laughs> Aw, that's sweet. Now, do you want the top bunk or the bottom? Uh. Oh, you're not sleepy? Do you want to play a game? Uh. So we played some games. We played Twister, <laughs> Right Foot Blue. Uh. Uh, close enough. Jenga, Jenga, Jenga. <laughs> then we went full on slumber party and did spa night. Ah! I thought I heard my monster in here. Your monster? Yeah, I created him in the basement. What's he doing with all that gunk on his face? We were having a spa night. What? Monsters don't do spa nights? Monsters are supposed to be ferocious and fierce and wreak havoc. He's not that kind of monster. I found him in the woods by the playground. He saved me from bullies, 
And now there are bullies looking for him. We have to protect our monster. Our monster? I think you mean my monster. He's coming with me. No way! Hey! Stop! Stop! Hey, keep it down in there. Quick, hide the monster. What on earth is going on in here? Nothing, Mom. Yep, nothing to see here. Uh-uh. What was that? Oh, my stomach. I don't think that leftover meatloaf sat too well with me, but uh, I'll be okay. <laughs> okay, well, time for bed. Yes, Mom. Okay, Mom. Now. Ugh. Meatloaf! You sure you're okay? Yep. <laughs> Good night. See ya mañana. Bye. Okay. Good night. Phew. That was close. <sighs> We can't keep him here. There's no way mom and dad will let us keep a monster. True. But we can't take him outside either. The vigilante bully gang is looking for him. What if they hurt him? But he's a monster. He could just destroy the gang. Easy peasy. <laughs> you seem to be forgetting that he's not the destructive, dangerous type. He's a big sweet softy. Look. <laughs> yeah, I guess he's not going to wreak any havoc. Hey, I know. Let's take him to Professor Weirdly's house. She'll know what to do. Great idea. Science teachers for the win. <laughs> okay, now how do we get him out of here without attracting attention? Of course. Uh -huh. Perfect. Let's go. So we set out into the night with our monster. It was a little scary, but there's no time to fear when you're on a mission. Super brave, right? Well, that was all about to change. Didn't know it yet, but the vigilante gang was closing in. So all was going according to plan. We were on our way to see Professor Weirdly, the science teacher at our school. She would know what to do with the STEM project gone awry. Okay, cool. I can see Professor Weirdly's house. We're almost there. Watch out! Is that what I think it is? Yep. What do we do now? Um, we could blast them with a giant water balloon or some other projectiles. Or we could just cast a protective force field around ourselves. Ooh, or we could sick a giant robot on them. Or we could run. That's always an option. Let's go. What do we have here? Oh, hi, sir. <laughs> nice weather we're having, huh? What are you kids doing out here this time of night? Who, us? Yes, you. We're just out for a little evening stroll. And you? I'm out looking for that monster that's been terrorizing the town. Oh, I haven't heard anything about that. Have you, Victor? No, Mary, not a word. A monster, you say? Who's that? Hmm? I said, who's that? Oh, her? Yes, uh, that's our grandma. Yep, <laughs> old granny. <laughs> but don't bother trying to talk to her. She's hard of hearing. <laughs> Granny, we're just telling this nice pitchfork-wielding gentleman that you're a little hard of hearing. <laughs> well, I guess it's our bedtime. Good night. Excuse us. Oh, hi, guys. We were just leaving. Come on, Granny. <laughs> Seemed too easy, right? We were just going to walk away, but then suddenly we heard... <laughs> Come on, Gran. Time for bed. Arr! Yeah, that's a kitty. Let's go. But the monster, being a big old sweetheart, jumped into the tree to rescue the kitten. Great. Wow, your granny sure is spry. Hey, she saved the kitten. Okay, granny, good job. Now let's go. Uh-oh. That's him. That's the monster. Get him. The gang was all riled up, and things were getting very scary. One guy swung his pitchfork up at the monster. Ha, I'll get ya. <laughs> but he missed. Phew. <laughs> but then it landed. Ah, hey, you stuck me. And that guy had been waving around a torch, so when he got poked with the pitchfork, he accidentally lit another guy's pants on fire. <laughs> it was chaos. Finally. We could have just run away at that point, but the monster was such a big old sweetie that he just had to jump down and help. Ah, that's better. Phew, thanks. Hey, wait, he's being nice. Monsters aren't nice. 
Well, this one is. He protected me from bullies. He rescued that kitten, and now he's helping you. Yeah, and I created him specifically to be a supervillain, too. I don't know what went wrong. So will you guys leave him alone now? Are you sure he's good? Look at him. <laughs> yeah, okay. We'll let you go. But you all better get home soon. It's late. We know. Just one more stop. Come on, guys. Let's go to Professor Weirdly's. And Victor, you say you made this all by yourself? Yep. Awesome, right? Very impressive. Where will you keep him, Professor? I think he'll be happy at school. He can live in the lab. So from that night on, our monster lived in Professor Weirdly's science lab at the school. <laughs> it was great. He took care of the class pets. He helped kids with their homework. Well, he tried anyway. He was the best school monster ever, and Victor and I got to see him every day. It was awesome. Yeah, but next time, I'll create a super bad monster that wreaks havoc and mayhem and destruction and, and... Oh boy, here we go. The end. Aw, so the monster got to live happily ever after. It would be so cool to have a monster going to your school, don't you think? Thanks for coming to Storytime. Can't wait to read more stories with you at Storytime soon. Bye. Today we're reading Dorothy and the Wicked Witch of the West. Oh no, I hope the witch doesn't know any magic spells. Okay, once upon a time, a girl named Dorothy ended up in the Land of Oz. Wiggle, snap, story time! Once upon a time, there was a girl named Dorothy. Hi! <laughs> I lived in a place called Kansas with my aunt and uncle. Hello! Hello. Life on our farm was very hard. Oh. Hot sun had baked everything until the land and all the buildings and even the people looked dried out and gray. The only thing that made me happy was my little dog Toto. <laughs> Hi Toto! Story time! with the stick. When we heard a crazy loud sound, the sound was getting louder and louder and louder. Toto, we have to hide. I think a freight train is coming for us or something. Ah, a flying cow. Dorothy, a cyclone's coming. Cyclone? The house is totally flying. Toto, I think we've landed. I hope we're not too far from home. Ow. Okay, we're definitely far from home. I bet we're even farther than Oklahoma. <laughs> hey, who are you? He's a munchkin, and he's very grateful to you, noble sorceress. Grateful? To me? Why? Because you squished the Wicked Witch of the East. <laughs> what? Me? No way! I wouldn't even squish her! Why? But you did squish her! Or your house did anyway! Look! Wow. I didn't do that on purpose! I promise! Don't worry! We're happy she's gone! She was a very wicked witch who ruled over the munchkins for hundreds of years! She was wicked! She was awful! She was the worst! Are you a munchkin? No, dear. I'm the witch of the north. Oh, a witch? Uh, but you seem nice. I thought all witches were wicked. I'm a good witch! The last wicked witch rules over the west, and she's even more wicked than her sister. Hey, she's gone! Did she come back to life? Oh no, zombie witches must be the absolute worst! No, no! See, when the witch is defeated, she disappears! Poof! I probably ought to get back to Kansas. How do I get back? Is there a train or something? Nope. 
Guess you'll just have to stay. Yay! You can be our queen! All hail queen... What's your name? Dorothy? All, All hail, hail queen, queen Dorothy! Dorothy. Hooray! Yeah! Hurrah! But Dorothy didn't want to be queen. She just wanted to go home. I don't want to live in... Wait, what is this place called? Oz, dear. You are in the land of Oz. Guys, what am I going to do? Go straight to the center of Oz, to the city of emeralds. That's where the wizard lives. He can help you get home. How do I get to the center? To get to the city of emeralds, one must follow the road of yellow bricks. That road right there. Good luck, Dorothy. We want you to have these, Queen Dorothy. Me? Really? Aww. Well, you are the one who defeated the Wicked Witch. And they're also way too big for our munchkin feet. <laughs> they're really beautiful. And legend says they're magic. Maybe they'll protect you on your journey to the Emerald City. Well, they are super comfy. And they do match my dress. <laughs> Okay, I'll take them. Dorothy and Toto said goodbye to the munchkins and began their trip down the yellow brick road when they passed a farm where something odd caught Dorothy's eye. Toto, look at that scarecrow. He almost looks like a real man, doesn't he? <laughs> Did you just wink? Maybe. <laughs> and you can talk? I've never seen a talking scarecrow. Well, how do you do, Mr. Scarecrow? I'm just very uncomfortable up here. I mean, I got a pole stuck in my back. Why don't you just get down from there? That would be amazing. Why didn't I think of that? Oh, wait, I know. It's because I don't have a brain. Aww. You don't? Nope, nothing but straw between my ears. That's too bad. I really like having a brain. At least I think I do. But it's my brain that makes me think that. Uh, I don't get it. Sorry, I'll help you down. Huzzah! I'm on my way to see the Wizard of Oz, and he's gonna help me get back home. Hey, maybe he could give you some brains. Why didn't I think of that? Well, it's settled. You'll come with me to the Emerald City, and the Wizard will help me get to Kansas, and he'll give you a brain. Huzzah! And off they went to see the wonderful Wizard of Oz. They walked for miles and miles until... What was that? I think I hear it again. Shh, Toto! Ah! Don't chop me! I would never! Why are you groaning? I've been stuck in this position for a whole year! It's very uncomfortable. Well, what can I do to help? Get my oil can, please! Oh, my joints are rusted stiff. Get my neck first. Ah, much better. Now my arm, please. What a relief. I thought I might be holding that forever. You saved my life. Dorothy saved my life, too. We're on our way to the Wizard of Oz. I'm getting a brain. Do you think he could give me a heart? You don't have a heart? How sad. Oh. It is sad. Enough to make me cry. But if I cry, I'll get all stiff and rusty again. Well, you absolutely must join us on our trip. To the wizard we go. Wait, oil can. Good call. OK, now to the wizard we go. The gang continued toward the city of emeralds. These woods are kind of scary. We're safe. I have my oil can. The scarecrow can't feel anything. And you have the magic slippers. But Toto, what's protecting him? We are. Ah, we are? <laughs> oh. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. A big beast like you going after a tiny dog. Ooh, Scarecrow, that sounds scary. <laughs> I'm the most cowardly coward who ever lived. It's okay to be scared sometimes, but you can't go around picking on smaller things just so you can feel brave. Where'd you get your courage? I don't know. I guess I've just naturally been tough. I wish I was tough. I've always been afraid of everything. Aww. Bears, spiders, kittens. <laughs> hey, guys. Let's go, guys. Wait, you're just gonna leave me here? Out in these scary woods all by myself? Let me come with you. We're going to see the Wizard of Oz. I'm going to get a brain. And I'm getting a heart. 
I'll go ask the Wizard of Oz for courage. What are you asking the wizard for? I just want to go home to Kansas. Is Kansas a scary place? Wait, wait, don't tell me. I don't want to go. Then let's go find that wizard. All they had to do was follow the road of yellow bricks. Uh-oh. It doesn't look so far. I could probably jump across. Well, look who's being brave. <laughs> I'd be way too scared to cross. Now why'd you have to go and say that? For a second I forgot I was a Freddy cat. You're gonna have to carry each of us across one at a time. Take me first. I'm made of straw, so if you drop me, I won't be hurt. Here we go. Woohoo! You did it! I knew you could! <laughs> the cowardly lion bravely carried across the others one by one. Oh, great work! <laughs> Now let's go meet the wizard! It had been a long and scary journey so far, but they were determined to find the wonderful Wizard of Oz. Look, a river! Seriously, who designed this road? This is just poor planning. What if I chop some wood and build a raft? Great idea! The Tin Woodman got to work and soon built a perfectly seaworthy vessel. The gang hopped on and began to head to the other shore. There she is! The brat who squished my sister! It's payback time, sweetheart! Suddenly, the wind picked up and the river began rushing. Oh no! We're floating away from the yellow brick road! And straight for the land of the Wicked Witch of the West! What are we gonna do? Well, I can't swim! I'll fall apart! And I'll rest! Paddle harder! They all paddled as hard as they could, but the poor scarecrow got his paddle stuck in the mud, and the raft went rushing on down the river without him. Scarecrow! Dorothy! We'll come back for you, I promise! Maybe I can swim against the current. Grab a hold of my tail and I'll pull you to shore. Ah, there's a fish! Phew, we made it! But where are we? We're so far from the yellow brick road and our poor Scarecrow. Dorothy, Toto, the lion, and the tin man walked along the river looking for their friend. There he is! Shoo! Go away! Dorothy, you came Aww. back! Of course! We're here to save you! Well, gang, shall we? Yup! I think the yellow brick road is just across this field of flowers. Oh, poppies! They're so pretty! <laughs> yes, they are! And just wait until you smell them! The Wicked Witch of the West knew these poppies gave off a very powerful scent, one that would make even the largest beasts fall into a never-ending sleep. When you're asleep, I'll take back those sapphire slippers, and then you'll be powerless! I'm getting sleepy. Oh, me too. But maybe just a little nappy wappy foist. Yeah, <sighs> nighty night. That's right, go to sleep, Dorothy. Now, time for Mama to get some new shoes. <laughs> ha! They're mine. Wait a second. They're stuck. The witch pulled with all her might, but she could not remove the shoes. They must be protected by magic. Well, I also have magic. And my flying monkeys. The boss. Take this girl to my castle. Aye, aye. <laughs> Once the flying monkeys had carried Dorothy away from the poppies, the flower's power wore off, and Dorothy woke up. Ah! This frightened the monkeys. Ah! And they promptly dropped Dorothy to the ground below. Ugh. Ow! Ugh. Okay, that was scary. But look, I'm back on the yellow brick road. What about my friends? Down here. Oh, hi. <laughs> you seemed upset just now. Anything I can do to help? My friends and I are supposed to go see the Wizard of Oz, but we fell asleep in that field of poppies over there. But it's a good thing you got out. The poppies are very dangerous. Your friends will sleep forever if we don't save them. How do we do that? The other mice and I can go get them. We've lived here forever and the poppies don't bother us. But my friends are way too big for mice to carry. They may be too much for one mouse alone, but the whole crew? Piece of cake. And soon there were hundreds of mice gathering around Dorothy. We'll be back in a sec. And the mice scurried off into the field of poppies. Dorothy waited, and soon she saw her friends, still in a deep sleep, being carried across the flowers. You should have warned us that one of your friends is a scary lion. He's not that scary at all. Watch. Eek! 
mouse. See? What's going on? We all fell asleep in the field of poppies, and these lovely mice helped save you. And look, we're so close to the Emerald City. Bye-bye, mouse friends. Thanks again for helping us. Anytime. Goodbye. And once again, Dorothy and her friends were off to see the wonderful Wizard of Oz. The Emerald City. Whoa. Let's go. <laughs> oh, Dorothy. The Wicked Witch of the West. Run. But the Wicked Witch was too fast for them. The flying monkey swooped in and snatched up the whole gang. Take that scarecrow and scatter his straw around until he's just a pile of clothes. And put that tin man in the recycling bin. Put the lion in a cage and sell him to the zoo. What about her? Take Dorothy to my castle. I'll take care of her. <laughs> hey, guys, how about just dropping me off here? I'll, I'll run along and I'll never bother the Wicked Witch again. No way. You wear the sapphire slippers. They're magic. Yeah, I heard that, but they haven't done anything magical so far. Well, you better watch out. The witch is definitely going to try to take those. When she arrived at the witch's castle, Dorothy was forced to do chores. And all the while, the witch watched, just waiting to take the shoe. Don't you want to change before you sweep up all that garbage? You'll get your shoes dirty. I'm OK, thanks. Oh, that floor is going to get slippery. Don't you think you should wear some less slippery <laughs> shoes? I got it. Good one. But no, I'm OK in these shoes. Then one day, the witch's wait was finally over. Dorothy was dusting a super high shelf when one of her slippers slipped right off. I got it! <laughs> it's mine! It's mine! Now give me the other one! Gimme! No, you gimme! You're powerless with only one shoe! So are you! <laughs> no! Come on! Stop it! another mess. You make me clean all day anyway. Not that. I'm melting! Say what now? I'm melting! Suddenly, Dorothy heard a familiar sound. It was a clanking of metal, a kind of swooshing sound, followed by a ferocious roar. Hey, guys! How did you get here? The scarecrow had been pulled apart and scattered in a field. He lay in pieces when he suddenly had a bright idea. He knew that crows are pretty clever, so he called out and asked them to help put him back together. And they did! Once he was back to his old self, the scarecrow went to find the Tin Man. The Tin Man had been sold for scrap at a salvage yard and was feeling sadder than ever. But the scarecrow put him back together, polished him up, and they set off to find the lion. The lion had been locked up in a tiny cage and sold to the zoo. There, the scarecrow had another bright idea. He asked the Tin Man to use a bit of his metal to pick open the lock on the cage. And then the lion was free. It was time to save Dorothy. But first, the Tin Man stopped to unlock each and every cage because it made him too sad to see any creature locked up. The Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Lion headed toward the Wicked Witch's castle. We have to rescue you from the Wicked Witch. Come on. Thanks, but it's all good. She melted. <laughs> uh. oh, let's go see the wizard. Now he'll grant our wishes. Hooray! The gang set out on their journey back to the Emerald City. And when they arrived, the wizard did not seem happy to see them. What are you doing here? So you can grant our wishes. Oh, I forgot to say please. Please, sir. <laughs> I cannot grant your wishes. Now go away. Wait, what? What do you mean you can't grant our wishes? This is baloney. You're supposed to be some wise and wonderful wizard. You're a charlatan, a humbug. Where are you? If you won't give me courage, then at least get some for yourself and come out and face us. Who are you? The wizard? You're the mighty and wonderful Wizard of Oz? Well, I'm actually from Omaha, Nebraska. I landed here accidentally some years ago and I somehow convinced everyone that I was a wizard. And well, here we are. So you're not a wizard. So you don't have any power. Um, no, not at all. Then we came all this way and did all of this for nothing? That's not true. You've saved everyone in Oz from the Wicked Witch. We celebrated here forever, Dorothy. But I just want to go home. And I want a brain. I want my heart. And I want my courage. Scarecrow, you already have brains. 
How else could you have figured out how to put yourself and the Tin Man back together? And you, Tin Man, you've shown you have a heart. You freed all the animals in the zoo. And Lion, you showed bravery when you stormed the witch's castle. You've had what you were looking for the whole time. But what about Dorothy? Hmm, Dorothy. Let's see what we can do. Hey, what about the magic shoes? You've got the sapphire slippers? That makes you the most powerful person in Oz. Do you know how to use them? Mm, nope, no idea. I'll bet the good witch knows. Scarecrow, you're really on a roll here with all the brain stuff. That's a great idea. So the wizard sent out a call to the good witch of the north. Dorothy, my dear, how are you? The scarecrow was thinking you would know how to use the magic of the sapphire slippers to get home. It's quite simple. Take three steps in the sapphire shoes and say your wish. It's that easy? <laughs> Wait, you have to say goodbye first. Oh, right, I almost forgot that I would never see you again. Tin Man, I'll never forget how kind you are. You have a wonderful heart. Someone better get his oil can. Lion, thank you for protecting us on our journey. Oh, shucks, Dorothy, I'll miss you. I'll even miss your terrifying dog, Toto. <laughs> Scarecrow, I don't think we would have made it without your quick thinking. I think you're the real wizard here. I better go. I love you guys, and I'll miss you. Come on, Toto. We'll miss you. We love you. Bye, Dorothy. Dorothy took three steps and said, take me home to Kansas. And in a flash, Dorothy and Toto were back in Kansas. It was more colorful than she had remembered, but maybe that's just because Dorothy was so happy to be home. The end. So the wizard turned out to be a little different than they thought he would be, but he still helped Dorothy find a happy ending. And wow, I totally want a pair of those magic slippers. So cool. Thanks for coming to Storytime. Can't wait to read more stories with you at Storytime soon. Bye.